Alright, now the first thing that um, I'm going to do is I'll just zoom in a little bit here and I will create a a plane, a polygon plane. Um, just under the polygon menu I um, selected polygon and uh, clicked anywhere on the grid. Now I want to center this up so I'll take the translate values, set them to zero, just highlight them all and uh, just um, on the last one you type in zero. Uh, now the uh, we could scale them up here but we're, we're better off um, doing it right from the creation point here. So the um, the width and height I think I'm going to set to 256 and there we go and the subdivisions width and height I'm going to set to 8 and there we are uh, I'll just switch over to uh, shaded mode by hitting the 5 key and um, the uh, grid is sort of in the way here so I'm going to tap uh, my hotkey to hide the grid. Now this is a hotkey that I actually added. Um, the way to do that is um, under settings and preferences go to hotkey editor and the um, I think it's under display uh, grid options? No toggle grid and with toggle grid um, selected under the hotkey editor I've uh, I've typed in the hotkey my particular hotkey is the backslash key now if um, if you already have that sel selected if you um, say you wanted to uh, type something like uh, well W we can query that and W is assigned to translate tool with snap marking menu so we can check to see if a hotkey has already been um, assigned to um, to whatever we want to um, or, or to the key that we want to use for the hotkey. Uh, so I used backslash and there was nothing assigned to backslash and so I assigned uh, I assigned that and now I can switch the grid on and off as much as I want. The um, the first thing that we are going to do with this uh, polyplane is I'm going to go into component uh, selection mode. I'm going to select by faces. And I'm going to select these corner faces here, uh, holding down shift to uh, make multiple um, object selections or multiple component selections. I'm just going to delete those out. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to select all these, these edges here. Uh, there's a much quicker way of doing that and that is to line those up and then control drag to deselect the others and I'll just shift drag to select those, control, drag, deselect those, uh, rotate, uh, shift, drag, select those, uh, control, drag, deselect, and shift, drag, control, drag. And there we go. We now have all of those outer edges selected. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I will switch to a either a front or side view and uh, zoom out so that we can see the edges uh, or the um, the places that we have selected. Switch the grid back on and I'm going to sw uh, switch over to the translate tool and I did that just by tapping W which uh, we saw before in the hotkey editor is the hotkey for translation. Now what I'll do is I will drag these down and I want them to be dragged down to uh, to where this is forming a 45 degree angle and that will mean that um, these faces that we've got are perfectly square. Now um, uh, I'm sort of dragging around and it's, it's fairly imprecise so what I will do is I'll zoom in a little bit and I'll hold down the X key notice that the 
um, the center of my translation uh, tool has turned to a circle. It was a square. I hold down the X key and it turns to a circle and that turns on um, snapping to the grid. And that's holding down the X key and dragging to to drag it into place. And I'm only dragging on the Y axis there. And that has um, set up the um, uh, the edges the the way that um, or to the height that I want them at. Uh, next, I'm just going to uh, select these edges on the end here. Now I just dra uh, dragged a selection around around these these guys. I'm going to control drag around um, these diagonal edges, and that means I've got the all of these edges along here selected. And I'm again going to um, just zoom in a bit more, and I'm going to uh, press and hold X, and this time I'm going to drag along the X axis, which is the red arrow. And just drag that so that it's level with the other faces. And I'll just repeat that operation over here. Control to deselect. Hold down X, drag in X. Okay, now um, I'll just go to a side view. and we can see that these faces need to be lined up so I'm going to select those, uh, deselect those, hold X, drag in Z because we're now in the right hand side view not the front view anymore. Select those, deselect those, hold down X and drag and there we go. And now if we go back to our perspective view, hide our grid, you can see that we have a sort of a uh, a box top shape. Uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, because um, these faces aren't actually connected uh, at the corners, uh, and I just undid that, um, I'm going to select um, by points, which includes vertices. And I'm just going to select that, select that one, sorry, shift select that one, so shift select any multiple uh, components, shift select that one, and shift select that one. And I say that one, but each of these is actually two vertices. And you can see that up here in my heads up display I have eight vertices selected. Um, if I go up and I'll click on the Merge Vertices button, which is also under um, Edit Mesh, uh, Merge Vertex Tool. Um, uh, I am a visual person, I prefer to click on pretty buttons. And, uh, and there we go, now we have four vertices uh, uh, selected and you can see if we actually select any of these corners now we only have one vertex uh, which means that those vertices did merge. Um, now I had those vertices right on top of one another so they should be um, uh, they should merge no matter what the merge distance is. Um, if you are having problems merging vertices you can select the distance and you can uh, boost it up to uh, to a higher number um, in order to um, in order to get it to uh, to snap to the point that you want uh, you want it to merge to, and so um, there we go. We now have this uh, this nice shape like this. And you may be wondering why I didn't start with a polygon cube, um, subdivide it, and then just delete the bottom. The reason for this is that uh, if we now go to window. UV texture editor. If we if we look in here, we actually have a really well laid out UV texture map, and uh, this comes in very important um, later on in the process. So this is just a, a quick sort of shortcut. Um, so I don't have to show you much UV mapping um, over the course of of this lesson.